Rotterdam, situated along the banks of the Moisbaar River, is the second largest city in the Netherlands. As in other countries, daybreak in Rotterdam is always busy with activities of its multi-ethnic inhabitants, especially around the jetties of the water transport known as the water bus. The water bus connects cities which are popular among the residents of Rotterdam and surrounding cities. The regular water bus service has made Rotterdam the main gateway for economic activities and tourism in the Netherlands. The Muslim community began to grow due to the mass migration of Indonesian workers in the 1970s. Since then, Islam has been accepted as a way of life of the Dutch community. Among them are the Middle Eastern communities from Turkey and Afghanistan, Somalia, Dutch Muslims, and also the Surinamese community from northern South America. The Muslim Surinamese community represents 8% of the total Muslim community in the Netherlands. Although only a small community, this ethnic group which speaks Ranang has a big influence on the activities of the Muslim society in Rotterdam. Ik vind dat ze iedereen gewoon in zijn waarde moet laten en ik zie het niet zo als dat moslim per se de mensen zijn die uh, al die ter terroristen uh, ze aanvallen plegen zeg maar. Kijk iedereen moet uh, mensen maken het heel uh, groot zeg maar, maar in principe hoeft dat niet. Onze God leert ons gewoon om met liefde naar elkaar toe te gaan en iedereen te respecteren zoals hij is. En uh, ja dat heb ik geleerd en dat zie ik ook in mijn omgeving ook has it, it's its own potential for peace, each religion. And the, the world knows all about the uh, potential of uh, violence from the, the religions, but it doesn't know the potential of peace. And we have to show we are, we are, uh, we have to, we have the order of God to show that uh, the world, that religions can live together. Among the factors that attracted the attention of outsiders to Islam is the close relationship between the Surinamese community and non-Muslim. They are categorized as open-minded Dutch Muslims when discussing religious creed and laws. Atrik is a really hard worker here in Holland. does a lot for the community. He uh, does a lot for Islam as well and his own work. He's like uh, individual work, he works for himself. And uh, there are a lot of projects going here in Holland for uh, uh, orphan children in Africa and different things that has to be done. And for himself, he's a really nice man, shows a lot of respect for all the people here in, in Holland everywhere. And um, yeah, it's good to work with him as well. Yeah, a very social person. He's very kind to the family, uh, to me as a wife. So that's why we're 19 years together now. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is one of my brothers. Uh, we are doing the DAO work together. He is, very, um, he is a very good person, very polite. Uh, that's, that's why Islam is leading us, uh, to show people uh, how, to, how to be, uh, actually. And I think Shafiq Shab is one of the examples. Uh, here in Holland, because the work what he is doing for the Ummah here in Holland is huge. The spread of Islam has made Rotterdam known as the main gateway to Europe for halal products, with the port of Rotterdam as the main central chain for the supply of halal products from Rotterdam to Northwest Europe. Indirectly, the Dutch Muslim community has become the driving force of the economic sector in Europe. A member of this community is Shafiq Masram, who was born in Suriname and has settled in the Netherlands as a mosque interior decorator. 
This father of two children was educated at Hoga School, Rotterdam. His experience with Western education makes Shafiq more comfortable about providing his children with religious education. To achieve his dream, Shafiq has had to allow his oldest child, who is 15, to further his religious education in the United Kingdom. As his youngest child, Ridwan, has begun to show deep interest in the same field, Shafiq has enrolled him at the Ababel School, an elementary education center with an Islamic orientation opened especially for Muslim children in Rotterdam. So, not two weeks long, jongens. Five. Five, very good. Five, very good. A lot of As for Shafiq, who migrated here a long time ago, he hopes that the Netherlands will always provide him with the opportunity to make a living and serve the Muslim community. I started like 25 years ago with this uh, big uh, design company in uh, Zoetermeer and I worked a lot of, uh, with uh, designers and uh, I was a draftsman at that time so this designer uh, work is, uh, got my attention so what I did I joined the Art Academy of Fine Art in Rotterdam and after the, uh, I got my degree in Rotterdam I changed my job to a big company in Amsterdam and became there the head office of the head of the design and after a few years and uh, after doing well and uh, good to work I decided to, uh, to start in 2000 uh, for as a freelancer and do an as uh, interior design As an interior decorator, Shafiq feels that it is his responsibility to introduce the beauty of Islam to the Netherlands. As a result, the glorious Cordoba Mosque always inspires him. What we see now in Holland is that uh, the mosque we are building, that uh, the population is very high of the young, young people uh, attending this mosque, uh, probably because uh, there's been a lot of negative uh, uh, about Islam and people want to find out wh why is this so negative. So they come to the, to the mosque uh, a lot these days. And what you see is that people mix uh, a lot uh, in this mosque. And Moroccan go to Morocco, not anymore. Moroccan go to Turkish because they speak the same language like Dutch. And all the lectures are in Dutch and all, all the events are in Dutch. So this is uh, actually a good thing what is happening in, in, uh, in Holland these days. And that's why the, the, you see that this is, uh, Islam is rising in Holland. The increasing number of mosques is a clear indication that Islamic teachings are becoming accepted and continue to spread in the Netherlands. To fulfill the needs of the Muslim community, Shafiq feels called to become the interior designer of a mosque, which is still under construction in Rotterdam. Although the result of his work is the source of his income, Shafiq feels that the demands of his responsibility is an act of worship. We want to make an, uh, an, a unique uh, environment. So what we did, we looked uh, at, the, at the mosque built in the time of the, when the occupation of Spain at uh, Cordoba. And we looked at this color and this environment and what kind of uh, feeling that people would have if they went to this mosque today. So actually this feeling, what, what they have in this mosque, we want to copy that and bring that to this mosque and roll that. For Shafiq, every challenge is a test. As someone who perseveres in the name of Islam, Shafiq believes that every test is given based on the capabilities of the person concerned. It has never broken his spirit to elevate Islamic arts in the Netherlands.
Kidam, known as a satellite city in the Netherlands, was chosen by Shafiq's wife, Faryal Bagalo, to be the place where she conducts her business. The city, which is known for the historical story of Dutch canals, was also chosen by the Muslim Surinamese community to be the place that they would migrate to. Life here makes it convenient for Faryal to enhance her sewing skills and carry out voluntary work in the local community. For the community, it was a lot of work. Uh, so we, Thursday, like Thursday, or every Thursday, we go to Den Haag for the for a special program. Uh, we do do seeker there with the community in Den Haag, and uh, every weekend we're busy working, doing dawa. Although a migrant, Faria has never felt awkward about living in the Netherlands. Instead, this young mother feels proud and grateful because of her skill. She has given guidance to women who are getting acquainted with Islam to learn about the Muslim way of dressing. Sincerity paves the way for plans to proceed as hoped. That is the reward enjoyed by Shafiq. His patience in highlighting the colors of Islamic life has changed the community's perception of mosques. At the beginning, there were some, uh, how do you call, difficulties with uh, people who were living uh, around the mosque. But uh, when they see the building, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, nearly finished, how nice it is, they are getting used to it and they are going to accept it uh, as a part of the surrounding, uh, the build it surrounding. Uh. Well, what we have noticed that there uh, are a lot of uh, mosques in Holland, but uh, they are not, um, they are not really mosques, they are like uh, garages or, or in uh, houses of people. And now the population is uh, extending, so all these mosques, uh, all these places has to be built, rebuilt or broken down and built new. So at this moment, like I'm doing like 10 or 15 projects, only mosques in Holland. So that's, uh, uh, if you compare that with the last 10 years, then uh, the mosques are, are really growing and the population is really growing. It's a different story in Amsterdam. The trust and confidence of the community in Islam has transformed the desired church into the Fateh Mosque. The mosque, which was brought by the Fateh Dutch Muslim Foundation, has undergone a variety of renovations since 1981. Inspired by art of the era of Khulafa al Rashidin, Fateh Mosque now stands as the Muslim landmark in the Netherlands. It is a Western civilization here, so you have uh, the norms from here, the values from here, but to live up in your Islamic and your own values, it is possible here because everything is respected by the people. And I think Islam is growing uh, more and more here. A lot of people uh, would who, who change their religion to Islam because of the realization they go through. And um, in Holland, yeah, I think you have this everywhere in the world with people with different religions and it depends on the person itself, how you live up to it, how you respect everyone and how you try to make the community as best as possible. We have some negative uh, politicians in Holland. They talk bad about Islam and what you see is that the effect is that more people are coming to the, to the mosque. A sister came, a Dutch sister came to us for information. And we start talk to the sister. Any question she had, she, she, she could ask. And I think uh, after uh, half an hour, what she said to us, uh, please make me Muslim. The comfortable life of Muslims in the Netherlands enables every family to freely practice the way of life and culture that they brought with them from their native country. One of the ways that Faryal uses to educate her children about their origin is through food. 
Every day, Faryar prepares the traditional food of Suriname. Other than that, she only speaks Rana with her children and her family. As a father, Shafiq has high hopes for both his children. Nevertheless, he gives them the freedom to choose their future as long as they wisely balance the needs of this life and the next, especially when faced with ever-increasing challenges to the way of life for Muslims in Europe. It is for this reason that however busy he is in his office, Shafiq ensures that he spends quality time with his children. Although that time is limited, Shafiq believes that if it is wisely spent, children will understand the needs of their parents. As migrants, Shafiq and Faria wish for a better life for their children in this foreign land. Only success will ensure that the Surinamese Muslim community will continue to be highly regarded by followers of other religions who make their home in the Netherlands. Uh, I know Shafiq for almost 10 years. And uh, my meaning about Shafiq is that ja, uh, I see a buurman, but also a good friend. Uh, als er wat is, kunnen we altijd naar elkaar uh, toe. Uh, als er een probleem zijn, kunnen we altijd op elkaar rekenen. En uh, ja, ik hoop dat het ook zo uh, blijft, zeg maar. We kunnen altijd op elkaar rekenen. Ja, ik uh, goed kennen van Shewik. Elhamdulillah Shewik. Uh, ken wij kennen tien jaar. Zelf de straat wonen. Elhamdulillah. Shewik, heel goede muslim. En net muslim. Wij zijn blij met... En uh, je staat ook klaar uh, voor de mensen, uh, voor, uh, je, je buren om je heen. Uh, je doet dingen en hoop vrijwilligerswerk. Ik heb je nooit uh, ergens uh, wat uh, voor terug uh, gevraagd. Je doet het uh, graag en ik denk ook met liefde. En uh, dat is wat uh, bij een goede moslim hoort. As a result of the understanding that has been forged, not only Shafi but a million other Muslims in the Netherlands are free to discuss anything about their creed even while relaxing with friends from other religions. Tranquil and peaceful. This best describes nighttime in the Netherlands. Shafiq usually fills this time with religious activities. He begins by teaching his children to recite the Quran. As practiced during the Prophet's time, it continues to be a way of life for the Surinamese Muslim community in the Netherlands. Although their number is small, it is a close-knit community. Mosques are always busy with many religious studies programs.
The younger generation's enthusiasm for religious activities makes Shafiq feel touched about the development of future Surinamese generations who make the Netherlands their home. Although life as Muslims in the Netherlands has its ups and downs, they prove that the sacrifice that they have chosen comes with a struggle that must be upheld. The power of knowledge is used as the key to restore the dignity of Islam in the eyes of the world and to rectify erroneous perceptions. We have some negative uh, politicians in Holland and that's a very good thing so and what we should do is uh, provide good mosques for them so that they can stay in these mosques and they have a good time in this. <laughs> It is for this reason that Shafiq always uses the time after religious lectures to remind himself and his friends about how important it is for the Surinamese society to unite and restore the relationship between Muslims and the local residents. <laughs> Shafiq inspires the younger generation to openly discuss religious issues and challenges with him. Prayers from the heart will be answered. What is important is sincerity and honesty in everything that we do because Islam always urges its followers to seek the best and strongly forbids them from bringing destruction upon themselves, as shown by the life that Shafiq Masram has carved out in the Netherlands. And I swear by the time, indeed man is at loss. Why is man at loss? Because we are following the wrong role models. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carries on saying in the next ayah, and the ones that talk about the truth, what was so self, and the ones that talk about the seven. The next episode. Tetapi akhir-akhir ini, karena kita dah melihat orang-orang asing datang banyak, jadi kita rubah daripada ketebah dalam bahasa. Uh, Indonesia kepada bahasa Belanda. Jadi setelah kita ketebah dalam bahasa Belanda, uh, jadi kelihatan bahawa uh, jemaah bertambah ramai.